internet, this is Jacob Clifford. Which of these are an example of technology? Well, they all are. The definition of technology is not about machines and computers. Technology are the skills, procedures, and techniques that we develop that improve our lives. So technology is not a new phenomenon. It's been with our species since day one. It's easy to look back and spot the big technological advances throughout history. I mean, spoken and written language, the agricultural revolution, the printing press, each marked a permanent change in the human experience. And we just recently witnessed another one. I mean, it's hard to remember the world before the internet. But what breakthroughs will happen next and what's the economics of the future? For simplicity, let's divide the history of human technological advancement into four broad eras. The first was the primitive age. This includes the development of the building blocks of civilization, like language and laws, and also basic tools like wheels and pulleys. Now, in most cases, these tools were complements to human labor. They made humans like stronger. The second era was the mechanization age, was characterized by the industrial revolution. New technologies like the cotton gin, and steam engines, the hydraulic cylinder, unleashed huge amounts of production. In this era, human labor transitioned away from doing the jobs themselves and towards creating machines that do the job way better. So machines are continually becoming substitutes to human labor. The third era is where we are right now the information age. Computers, along with the internet, have advanced our collective ingenuity and have allowed us to share ideas and technologies at once impossible speeds. So, what happens next? What if in the future machines and computers do everything better than humans? And I'm not just talking about menial jobs, I mean all jobs. I mean, what if they were incomparably better doctors, teachers, engineers, or policemen? This would be the automation age, and the implications are like <laughs> For example, imagine that humans eventually create a computer that's smarter than us. That means that computer can produce a computer smarter than itself, and that computer can produce another computer that's smarter than itself, and so on and so on and so on. This is called technological singularity. It's when we develop artificial superintelligence that can solve any problem. And I'm not just talking about math problems, like finding the last digit of pi. I'm talking about human problems, like poverty, food and energy shortages, climate change, and disease. I mean, look this up, really, it's a real thing, technological singularity. Now, what's mind-boggling about this is that the world would change at unimaginable speeds. I'm talking about days or even hours. I mean, think about it. Once we create the first self-engineering, artificially intelligent computer, then that would be able to produce another computer, update itself faster, and then faster, and then faster, then faster, 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 faster. Within minutes, we'd have new ways to produce food and houses, energy and transportation at extremely low costs. Right Right now, it's hard to even imagine a world like this. I mean, to us, you can't have an unlimited amount of food, right? There's only so much land, and plants only produce so much crops. But the computers wouldn't be bound by our limited understanding of the world. I'm talking about crops that are engineered to be grown and harvested in minutes, houses that are sprawling mansions but fit inside a closet, a nearly infinite source of clean energy, and ways to travel that we've never even dreamed of. Okay, I know some of you are thinking, no, that's not what the future is going to look like, that's just science fiction. Okay, fair enough, this might just look like fantasy, but remember, it was only 500 years ago when Columbus sailed across the Atlantic, and there's no way he could even imagine imagine the world of today. So what's the world going to look like 500 years from now? How about 2,000 years from now? It seems like science fiction, but it's a scientific fact that human civilization is advancing at a faster and faster and faster rate. So even if this idea of technological singularity doesn't even happen this way, we're still likely to have an automation age where machines do everything better than humans. Okay, so let's get to the economics. What is the economy in the future when machines do everything better going to look like? Well, before we move forward, let's quickly go back. One of the most important but overlooked technological breakthroughs of the primitive era is the development of money. Yes, to be fair, the desire to accumulate wealth has resulted in uncountable tragedies throughout history. But it's undeniably clear that money has been a driving factor, the incentive that has helped push our species forward. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, and it's probably going to be in the comments below. You're probably going to say, no, it's not money, it's science, it's inquiry. Our desire to learn and improve has been our greatest motivator. It's not money. Okay, but where did the metal for Galileo's telescope come from? And what about his food? Behind every great thinker, there was literally thousands of people that made those discoveries possible. Miners, blacksmiths, farmers, tradesmen, they weren't slaves. It's not slave labor. Those individuals did those jobs to earn money. If Galileo had to mine his own ore, grow his own food, and build his own house, then he wouldn't have time to make those discoveries. And that's true for almost all technological advances. Egypt, China, Greece, Rome, England, the United States, these weren't places that had more geniuses. 
These were places that were relatively rich. Anyway, my point is, in the first three eras, people wanted money because it allowed them to buy the things that would make their lives better. But what if, and stay with me here, what if you could have anything you wanted and it was almost at no cost? In the automation era, humans not only wouldn't have to work to earn money, they really couldn't work to earn money because computers would just do everything better. So humans would add nothing to the production process, but that's okay since advanced technology would allow us to have everything we want, like food and consumer goods. So there'd be no reason to have money, and no money means no profit, and no markets, and no inequality, and no private ownership of resources, right? The master computer would be owned and enjoyed by everybody. You see what I'm getting at here? Yeah, this is good. I love it. Yeah, the economy of the future might just end up being communism, but not because it's more efficient or superior than free markets. In this case, communism would be the product of generations of capitalists attempting to solve the biggest problem in economics, scarcity. Thanks for watching, till next time. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment below. Let me know if you think the future is going to look like this, if you think communism is eventually going to happen, or if we're going to kill our species off or something else is going to happen. Also, take a look at my other videos. I made some videos about the economics of Trump and also the economics of Halloween and Disneyland and cool stuff like that. Thank you again so much for watching. Until next time.